There's something we haven't talked about in a while. A new outbreak of the Ebola virus has emerged in Uganda. More than 60 cases have been confirmed as of last week. And unlike the outbreaks a few years ago, there is no vaccine for the new strain. For more on what this means for the rest of the world, we are joined by infectious disease specialist, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Good to have you with us. Good morning, Henry. Okay, Ebola, what are the current vaccine options for Ebola? Well, there's a, a strain of Ebola virus called the Zaire Ebola virus for which there's been a lot of research and development on a vaccine. And in fact, that has transformed Ebola virus outbreaks uh, over the last about seven or eight years since the 2014-2015 outbreak in West Africa. And it's been used in other Ebola virus outbreaks very successfully to quell those outbreaks. But this current outbreak of Ebola virus in Uganda is with what's called the Sudan Ebola virus strain, and there's no licensed vaccine. There's some vaccine candidates, and, and clinical trials are starting imminently to see if they work and how well they work, but there's nothing that's been rapidly deployed to protect others, to prevent this from growing into a larger outbreak at this point in time. Yeah, and in fact, they've had deaths already from this strain. What can the rest of the world learn from Uganda and how they're responding to the outbreak? Well, for starters, we have to remember that this is a virus that is going to pop its head up from time to time. It's so far, it's largely been restricted to African settings, and it's a large public health concern in many African settings. There's a tremendous amount of experience with African public health teams, for example, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, successfully responding to this. But if you don't take it seriously, and if you don't, don't jump on it, quick enough, they can rapidly grow to larger outbreaks, such as the one in West Africa several years ago, which infected roughly 30,000 people and killed close to 11,000 people. So that's why it's so important to jump on this quickly. This is a major regional issue. Once in a while, cases can be exported internationally through commercial air travel. But in general, this is a major regional issue. But as we've seen with every other outbreak, mm -hmm. people can uh, be infected in one corner of the earth and land on another corner of the earth rapidly. Regardless of if it affects us here in Canada, it's still important to help our friends and neighbors around the world and help with some resources, uh, support, and ensure that they're able to quell this quickly. Uh, you might have heard just a few minutes ago we were speaking with Dr. Sharkawi about COVID-19, and I'm curious how the focus on, on the coronavirus response affected the Ebola outbreak. Well, I mean, there might be some parallels in terms of better training and, and, and more personnel who are at least uh, tuned into outbreak response and pr outbreak response preparedness. Having said that, we know that COVID-19 has drawn a lot of resources uh, away from traditional public health uh, uh, programs uh, because COVID-19 was, was just such a massive issue. And we are seeing the resurgence of other infections as a result of that. For example, polio vaccine strategies and measles vaccine strategies uh, over 2020 and 2021 might have been a little, sadly, a little uh, compromised. And, and we're going to see, and we have been seeing polio and, and measles outbreaks. But with Ebola, I think it's a little bit different in the sense that there's a spillover event and then propagation in humans. Uh, and, and, of course, when you hear about an Ebola virus outbreak, it truly is an all-hands-on-deck approach. And Uganda has managed these very successfully before, and I think they're doing an excellent job right now, given the, the current situation. But, of course, a, a vaccine would be most welcome. You know, part of that management before, you'll remember, was there were border closures, there were travel restrictions. How high is the risk of infection with Ebola? Well, I mean, so currently there's, when we, can, when we think about the confirmed and suspected cases, there's about 140 confirmed and suspected cases with about 52 deaths. So, it, you know, it's, it's about the, roughly about the 10th largest Ebola virus outbreak to date. But it, we've seen much larger outbreaks before, like the West African one with about 30,000 people infected. People can travel, people can um, infect others in, in across borders. Usually that's regionally over land travel, but certainly by air. My bias, and I think it's, uh, you know, the best approach is, of course, ensure that the country has the resources to quell the outbreak. Don't isolate the country, making it more challenging to bring in resources mm. to isolate, to, uh, to um, quell this outbreak. And by providing support, uh, I think we can get this under control much quickly. But that's, of course, a global effort, which we're seeing right now. Dr. Bogosh, always great to have your expertise on these stories. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.